Welcome to the Kaiju Podcast. I'm Ralph. I'm Jorge. And today we are talking about Battle in Outer Space. 1959. Uh, Ashura Honda. And, uh, yes. Okay. So, I just told you that I have a disclaimer. Oh, okay. I struggled so hard watching this movie. Because of quality? The, the, the sounds or whatever... I don't know what it was, just kept putting me to sleep. I don't know. Really? I don't know what was going on with me. I don't know if there's a gas leak in my house or what. <laughs> but I'd have to literally stop, rewind it five minutes, play it. Stop, rewind it five minutes. I was like, I kept falling asleep. And I got plenty of sleep last night. <laughs> so wow. I don't know what happened. Wow. Um, which is weird because it's like... This movie, and I don't know if it's just overload, but it's nonstop action. It's like beginning to end, just an action movie. So I don't know if it was just the the constant sounds of just laser fires or what. Mm. But it was like hypnotizing. Maybe it's oh, maybe it's, it's like so. Uh, there might be seizure warning. Maybe there 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 might From be all the all the all the <laughs> all the spaceship lasers. battles. It was, uh, I'm pretty sure I saw the whole movie. Oh, you think there might be gaps? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think there's Is that gaps. <laughs> okay. But there might, there might be. I don't think there's gaps. All right. So, Let's... 1965 is when it takes place. Right. That's like a Six Monster years Zero. Into when it the takes... future. Yeah. In Monster Zero, it takes place in 1960X. Right. Um, the, okay. So, we mentioned this on the last episode. This is like a technically or not technically or technically a sequel to the Mysterians. Right. Now I'm trying, we watched Mysterians a while ago and at the end of that movie, we see three ships fly off into space Mm -hmm. and they are the exact same ships as the fighters in this movie. The sort Mm -hmm. of like, the sort of look illuminated stars that light up yeah. every time they shoot. Okay. Um, nothing else really in it led me to believe it was the sequel to Mysterians. Doesn't really feel like a sequel to the Mysterians. Right. Especially since we get very limited time seeing the aliens. Right. And the aliens, even though we hear them talking, did we see the aliens? What were those laughing things? Oh, those things. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then they're not. They're, they're not those aliens at all. Right. And then we don't really. The only thing we we hear is the voice that commands people to do their bidding. Right. So it's not. That's what I was hoping. I'm like, I hope I didn't miss a part where we saw the aliens because I kept going back. I'm like, no, there's no. I haven't seen any aliens except for this weird scene in the caves. Where they're just like giggling. <laughs> those things are cool. Uh, uh, okay, I like those things. They yeah. looked like a whole bunch of little mechanicongs. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, I had there. I mean, they were kind of like yeah. I I didn't somehow I didn't feel that they were necessarily the aliens as much as they were some other thing that either the aliens used or they are moon people. Got it. Uh, they didn't, cause they didn't, they, 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 yeah, the way they were, they, they, they didn't feel, uh, like as much of a menacing threat as the aliens were. Right. They seem more primitive. There's something weird, but yeah, they're, yeah, exactly. Like, uh, okay. So they were probably just moon people. Like the primitive people in the time machine. Yeah. Right. The Hordax or whatever they were called. Yeah. Yeah. I think Hordax were from He Man. Oh, the evil Horde. What? <laughs> he He-Man? He Man. They had a name, I forget, but they did have a name. Um the the uh, this movie um also not readily available. Uh watched it on yeah. watched it online streaming. Um not the best quality. Better quality than the Mysterians, but I, Morlocks. Morlocks. Yeah. Go on. Sorry to interrupt. But I don't like I, I not that I like super love this movie, 
Um, I really liked Mysterians a lot. Uh, I don't understand why these aren't available. I know it's this is definitely this same thing happened when, when we saw Mysterians. Both these yeah. movies have a thing where like you were watching them and it's like, God, I wish you could tell they look. I amazing. wish I could find a better version of this. Right. The... So badly. Every time there was like a really cool like painted set picture yeah. of whatever the there's that the, the, the international base or, you know, any of like the the little uh, all the space uh, models, all, all the yeah, ship models. all that stuff. The opening, the opening with the with the space station, with the spinning space station, yeah. and it's just the the sixties sci fi aesthetic is just such a. It just I I I love it so much, and it's just like oh, this is so. We watched it's so we, grainy. We watched so Matango on Prime Video, I think, and it was nice. It was HD and it was like widescreen, and it's like why Matango and not these two movies? Right. What is what like? Because they're just like begging to be done they nicely. They're definitely and there uh, there are. The word DVDs out there, like I, I, I started looking it up. There are other verbs. It was like it was too late, but uh-huh. um, there were some like uh, there, there'd be like these random like Toho collection, which will be like uh-huh. H Man, Mothra, and Battle from Outer Space. Right, and it's like I don't understand why they grew up like that. Or another one was, but I uh, wonder if the quality is any good. Yeah, good question. Because like there'll be like a, an eight dollar DVD. Yeah, because someone there, whoever like uploaded in it. Yeah, whoever uploaded this to the internet probably used the best thing they had, and it was probably from one of those. Where's Where's Criterion? I want Criterion to do yeah. uh, a Shiro Honda non Godzilla set with Matango. And Mysterians and Battle for Outer, Battle in Outer yeah. Space and yeah. a Toho, yeah, Tokusatsu, Rodan, yeah. like Rodan could be in there too. Totally, like just that 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 nineteen sixties Shiro Honda. It just nothing else looks like it. I love how like all the spaceships and space stations uh, interiors look like submarine interiors, and. <laughs> Everything is a twisty knob to turn. Yeah, it's not. It's not buttons. No, it's, uh, like those, yeah, yeah, those, those pressurized cranks. Yeah, it's all like a series of pipes. <laughs> and that's uh, why I would the get satellite confused. firing back at the flying saucers. It's right, like, it's just so fun, so great. Yeah, the this, whole opening. Yeah, this movie oh. is is. I mean, it might as well be Thunderbirds. It's like watching Thunderbirds, but without puppets. Mm. There's so (laughs) much. Everything is a model shot. It's crazy how much model work is in this movie. Yeah. There's beautiful, beautiful stuff in it. Uh, Really, really beautiful stuff. Um, This is, by the way, is the first Toho movie that when it was released in the States, they didn't add or delete anything. They just dubbed it. Oh, that's good. That's good to know because I noticed the credits were done in English, and there was one title card that had all the American actors in it. Yeah, or I guess some non-Japanese actors, and so I, I was like, oh, I wonder if this is like a co-production sort of thing. But that's good to know that it that it was pretty much kind of left as is. Um, a lot of familiar voices, like the dubs, the actors doing the dubs sound like familiar from other movies that were dubbed okay uh i mean i can't pinpoint anybody but it's always fun to hear like the uh uh one of the main guys sounded like the guy doing the narration in king of the monsters okay uh who wasn't maybe it wasn't king of the monsters because that was raymond burr oh right 
maybe it was maybe it was uh god i don't know i don't know it could have been uh, i don't know the rocket the, it, like sounded very very specific but um i always like that because usually you get like key luke and and george takei and paul freeze like right. we've seen them pop right. up in a couple of movies same ones. and they're usually so, they're usually all in the same movie so there's clearly like one company that did the dubbing for these um the the movie opens with this uh, mysterious train accident that we get to see. Great unfold. disaster stuff. Yeah. yeah, right. They they mass they let they they find they find a way to levitate the bridge off the gap, yeah. and the train just runs off yeah. uh, off the tracks. Yeah, uh, a lot of this reminded me of Independence Day. Sure, which is just flying saucers blowing up sort of uh, iconic locations. Um, we didn't really get to see the boat in the canal, but we saw the aftermath of that. Yeah, they, they, they and it'd be, yeah, it's like a, it's like a painting. It's kind of yeah. like I love it when it's like it's like it's kind of like a it's like a painting, but it's as if they're trying to pull it off as a photo. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and the same thing the 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 disaster in Italy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's great. Um. So I got a little bit confused at the beginning here because Dr. Ahmed leaves the um, sort of the UN kind of. Right. Place. World Council is having a meeting at the Space Research Center. And Dr. Ahmed kind of has something going on. He doesn't – it looks like he doesn't feel well. Right. He gets up and leaves and then walks into what I thought was a lady's backyard. But it's part of <laughs> – <laughs> but it was part of this uh, council – area and he looks up into sort of a light and then it cuts away and she freaks out and i'm like oh why didn't they show him like disappear but then we get to see it later um so yeah this dr ahmed guy gets uh is being controlled by the aliens um and uh it's funny because he as soon as they find out about the aliens they immediately build a laser and build rockets. Well, they've been working on, I think that that like so, that heat gun, the heat ray gun is something they've been working on. Okay, I didn't it's, know if it was in this response. Is just, this is this is a re, this is the space research center. Got it. But you know, now <laughs> it's time that this stuff, you know, is is like okay. Now is, this is what you've been working for. Right. Um. There, there's this the whole the. There's this kind of weird thing when, like, I'm get, basically the American shows up, uh, and he brings his wife and kid, and then they go away until the end of the movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, they're here uh, just because their dad's gotta go have this meeting with the council. It's also interesting. There were some old flags when, in the different places. I actually was like, that's not the Canadian flag, and then it, it was back in the '60s. Oh, okay. And the the Chinese flag was for the Republic of China from before it was the People's Republic of China. Okay. And so I was like, oh, those are those are curious. Um, they they immediately figured out that there was some kind of mind control going on with uh, the Iranian guy, Doctor Ahmed. They just were like, oh, th that's definitely what happened. <laughs> and well, he takes. He takes that lady hostage and he's like holding her, holding a gun up to them and he's holding on to her. And then they, the, the other dude, he like, he like hits this switch that drops a weight on his hand. Yeah. There's, there's like a random hanging weight. There's a random thing hanging there that looks like, like a, yeah, like a milk can. <laughs> it's a random thing and it drops right on his hand, right, right at the, right where his hand is holding the gun out. Yeah. But well, first of all, he had when he's this is OK. So uh, uh, first they do the test and they show that the heat gun can go through uh, beryllium 19, the strongest metal uh, on Earth. Right. And um, they say that this is the same uh, material that they're they're making for the skin of the. They call it the Speep One. Uh-huh. And I was like, 
What? And so when I looked up uh, what the different vehicles that are in this movie, there is the Speep is the name of those rockets. Okay. Are the Speeps. Speep 1 and 2 are the two rockets <laughs> that later go up to the moon. Got it. There's a there's a there's a weird moment when the doc and the woman who um, I think she's the woman who witnessed Dr. Ahmed when he uh, maybe he got teleported. We don't know exactly what she's witnessed, but where they were like saying, uh, uh, hey, try to cheer up, doc. And the doc's like, (laughs) and then there's this long, awkward silence. And then he just leaves Uh, 600 megatherms and. 20,000 hours on a single charge. That's all that's all the specifics. I, like, whenever there's like specifics about what, like, uh, something like, I don't know what a megatherm is, I, the, no. these type of things, I, I'm a fan of. I was trying to figure out if there was a brilliant 19, if it was the hardest metal, or what is the current hardest metal. I don't yeah. know. Is it all but, um, so, anyways, when, when Dr. Ahmed shows up again, he's trying to steal the heat gun. The guy catches him. And he he pulls out the gun, and he gets arrested. Uh, the then he has a second gun. It's like you got to fist the guy. <laughs> yeah, it was such a like a it's such a civil ar- arresting of him. Like, uh, just go with that guy. Great. And that guy kind of just showed up a little bit. Like we saw him go through the thing, and suddenly he's there to arrest the guy. It's like how. Like he just happened to be there, the right place, at the right time to arrest this person. <laughs> I, well, I mean, this is that the World Council? Well, but this guy ends up—I don't know who this maybe was because this guy seems like this was some kind of security personnel that joined later because he he flashed the badge uh, when he went through security when he was going into the thing. Hmm. Uh, but I did love. Then suddenly, the flying saucer shows up. Uh huh. And everyone's reaction is, get down, get down. Right. <laughs> the uh, the rocket, the the rocket that they send the people up in. Yeah. Yeah, in, the inside looks like a submarine. The, uh, and they need a ladder. There's like a ladder on the floor, but when it's on its side, they have to climb up the ladder and sit down. Um, the, the tower model for the rocket is insane. Yeah. I loved it. Well, first of all, I was like, oh, cool, a night launch. Because the first time we saw it, it was nighttime. Yeah. But then they didn't launch the next day. So we got we, – they had two shots of it. It's also, by the way, the way they they frame it, the second rocket is always in like the same orientation from the main rocket. Like uh-huh. even when they came back down to land, they landed – like it was the same kind of shot. Yeah. They were in the like – the different thirds of the frame. Um, okay, so let me ask you about this rocket launch. They take off and we get some reactions of the guys inside. And one of the dudes is pulling his face back. Okay. Is he simulating G-Force for the camera? I think he is. <laughs> he's simulating G-Force, but he's doing it with his hands. It's, I, 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 I believe... <laughs> The goal was to be like, oh, my face. Uh huh. <laughs> but it is so blatantly obvious. Yeah, his hands are all the way in frame. Yeah. Well, no, I didn't think he was trying to hide it. I think it was as if he was like, it was making him like, like the G Force were uh. so strong, he was like holding on to his face because his face was feeling so stretched apart. But he was doing the stretching. And right. he's the only one who did it. Right. No one else did it. Um, okay. So speaking of. Okay. Gravity only affecting one person. Yeah. Speaking okay, of that. <laughs> so they didn't explain. My, it's like I was waiting for the explanation that there'd be a little thing on the belt that you have to make sure is clicked on or turned to the right dial so that the gravity doesn't affect you. Right. So this dude unbuckles his belt when they mm-hmm. land mm-hmm. and he immediately floats up to the ceiling. Straight up. Everybody else stands up <laughs> and brings him down. And the response was, you have to remember, there's no gravity on this spaceship. Right. As the dude is just standing there. It doesn't make any sense. And I feel like maybe you're right. 
but the dub is wrong. Uh, if it even is in the dub. It should but, be literally yeah. something like, don't forget about the gravity. Make sure yeah, you have your belt your, set. Your gravity activator. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because everyone that, else that's the step. everyone else is just standing there like nothing. Yes. And as soon as they get up, as soon as, as, soon as they land, <laughs> yes. it's time to start space procedures. <laughs> and they had to put everyone on space procedures. Uh-huh. Just... And then they get out. When they get out of the ship, that dude goes flying off what again. What the hell, man? What is he doing that's causing him to fly away? And he's, he's like, help, doing... help, he's come get me. Forgetting. He is, what, it's, what he's doing is forgetting about the gravity. Right. You constantly have to remember the gravity in order to not fly away. Uh, I love <laughs> when they look at the what's left of the satellite. Oh, especially one part of it. The guy. There's a puppet dude. So beautiful. Okay. So it was it was amazing because I saw it and I'm like, oh, am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? Because we never really see – we see ships in space and we see ships blow up in space, but we don't mm -hmm. see the debris floating in space. So mm -hmm. this is like the first time. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then we see the guy. And so the crew, as they're passing by, says, let's say a prayer. Right. So a couple people uh, do like cross their hands like they're praying like uh, yeah. you would at like Catholic school. And then some people have like their hand up to their head or something. One dude has his hand up to his mouth like he's about to holler something. And I don't know if that's just some super futuristic way to pray. I don't know. Or how you put you how you cup your hand over your your, your mouth to whisper into somebody's ear. Like that's the motion he did when everybody started to pray. And I don't know what that is. And it made me laugh. But the puppet guy in space was great. Because you just yeah. see it as debris. And you see like the fuselage kind of busted in a couple of spaces and then a couple of floating things. But as it pans around, you see like just that silhouette of the body. And you're like, oh, cool. Puppet people. Um, they land on the moon. Wait. Because there's, there's, they get attacked first. Before they land on the moon, they get attacked by the oh, flag right. saucers. Right, right, right. I like and those. I like those. One of them guns. gets, yeah. One of them gets uh, mind controlled mm -hmm. on the ship. It turns off and the weapons. It tells them to cut the power to the heat gun. Right. And so he goes, and there's a whole bunch of more of those knobs to turn. Right. And he has to go keep turning all the knobs. And then the other guy catches him doing it, and he has to try and fix it. And it's great because he just kind of, like, moves him back and forth like he's driving a car. Uh-huh. Like your kid pretending to drive. Uh -huh. And then they have a big – they have a fight in, the, like, in that section. Yeah, it's like uh, they're having a fight while he's, like, trying to spin plates. So he keeps, like, trying to – Right. Like, do so, the thing. I like the so, way that the gun works on the ship, though, how it shoots, like, lightning out. And if something yeah. gets kind of close enough to it, it immediately jumps over to that thing and hits them. Uh, the, a cool effect. Yeah, I like I like I like where they all 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 the all the space lasery things work in these movies. Um, yeah. So they're not going to be able to charge the heat gun enough, so they have to instead do evasive action. Mm -hmm. And um, there's. Um, it's just crazy. These guys in these suits and <laughs> trying to do it. There's a, there's a, I like this part where someone's calling the uh, other ship and he says, hello, number two. <laughs> the model of the moon as they approach it, uh, they painted part of it blue, almost like there was water in it. Uh -huh. And uh, then they do reverse altitude for the moon landing. Right. Which they have to then spin the rocket around and and then uh then so they can land backwards so they can then later take off again. Right. And <laughs> how they get off the ship is they get lowered in like a bucket. Right. With a big extended arm. Uh huh. And loved it. Yes. All of this stuff where you see like the landing pads come down and all of the all of this stuff with the with the 
them arriving on the moon is really cool model stuff. Um, nothing cooler than uh, the moon buggies. The yes, the, the moon, the lunar, their lunar rover all terrain vehicle, yeah. which basically is a space wiener mobile, right? It, with not only that, it also had that slinky bit in the middle, like uh, uh, one of those toy dogs. <laughs> yeah, it, it like uh, it, like the in between of uh, or the jetway, like when you're when you're boarding a plane. Like it had that sort of has that sort of thing that connects to the door of the airplane, right? That sort of, or it's in like subways or and or stuff. those special buses. There's those like extra oh, long, yeah, buses the long buses that, have, that can, that, yeah, they can do those turns. Um, and this is where Gravity Guy, <laughs> Gravity Guy forgets again, and there's yeah. that great kind of like that bouncing doll bit. Yeah, and he's like, help, 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 and they all walk over to save him. How? Because they're not thinking of gravity. Um, the, the, the tank, the moon buggy tank, yeah, uh, needs to be a toy if it isn't already. Yeah. It was my favorite vehicle in the movie. I'm for sure. The rockets at the end, the like, I love just the thing that the way, the way, how it's, how it's, uh, carried on the, on the rocket. Oh, oh the, the little it has tumbler? That, it's the attached little thing that then it get, lowers it down and can pick it up. The yeah. Just it on the side of the rocket was so cool looking. Yeah, how that like thing just kind of rotated to expose it and then it came out. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is – that's all it's all the stuff I like. Like there's stuff like this I think in Destroy All Monsters. We get a lot of stuff like this, like sort of moon buggy vehicles and stuff. But yeah. I really like these uh, – they had like like two little antenna on the front, so it kind of looked like a caterpillar. Uh, but I like that. So it had tires in the front, it had tank treads in the back, but it could also f- like hover. Right. It so could, it was yeah. set up to go through any terrain. Yeah, it's that's what its design was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is this where we meet up with the laughing aliens? Um. Well, not yet. I mean, they basically, they, uh, the, the aliens control another person. Right. Uh, there's that, there's that shot of the guy sliding down the ladder, which I thought was a doll. And then he took a couple like big steps. Also, by the way, (laughs) they definitely do like, they try to walk like they're on the moon. Yeah. They take big kind of like bouncy steps, pretty uh-huh. good. Uh, basically, they find the moon base model, and uh, <laughs> the moon base model. <laughs> the moon base. Yeah, it's a pretty model. Uh-huh. Uh, they and the, basically what happens is that they they send one like one guy's got to go. I think he maybe went to go hit the heat gun. I forget, but it's when he went with that woman that the woman then got caught by the uh, space people. Right. But go ahead. What, what did you want to say about them? The laughing aliens? I think yeah. we, I think we already said what we, what we needed. I to love say. them. I love them. They're so cute. They're, they're, they're so, I was like, are those a bunch of mechanic <laughs> They're tiny, but they're not like super tiny. They just come up to the, to the other people's shoulders. Right. So they had like kind of a cool like sort They're just of a, slightly shorter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't quite little people. It was just like shorter people. Uh, yeah, their designs were cool. They reminded me of Mechanicong, but also they reminded me of uh Billy was, the head. Yeah, with the two buttons sort of like but on I the But I guess head. that's like the helmet. Maybe that's the helmet. Yeah. I guess. But their costumes kind of reminded me of there's a dude in uh, Hellboy 2. That Seth MacFarlane played. He was like a he was like a ghost inside sort of a leather like diving bell sort of costume. Like it reminded me of that. Like they looked like a it didn't look like a slick spacesuit, but it looked like a kind of a weird, almost leathery <laughs> suit. Yeah. Yeah. Um oh, yeah, you just sent me a picture. Uh, 
Yeah, so the two buttons on their head remind me definitely of Mechanicong's eyes. Yeah. And the snout and the sort yeah, of visor. Yeah, definitely kind of like very animal looking kind of in a, yeah. like, a like a robot animal, almost like uh, the uh, in the original Battlestar Galactica, kind yeah. of like the shape of the head. Like if you slid down the sort of forehead knobs over the visor, it would look just like Mechanicong. Yeah. Yeah. They're really cool. They're, I was hoping we'd see them unmasked. Right. Or, yeah, I don't know. Are they... So it was great. So, like, they, there's, like, the moon, they, they find, they're at the moon base. They're like, uh, all right. Well, I don't think we can do anything about this. We're in trouble. We're going to just have to go back. And the guy's like, well, at least let me try and sneak in. He's like, <laughs> I but, says, yeah, I can at least destroy part of it. Right. And they're like, okay, fine. And then everyone's like, oh, yeah, me too. Oh, yeah, I want to go do – I want to do that. Me too. And then everyone's interested in, like, going to try to do some kind of damage to uh, the moon base. Right. Like, what was the plan to begin with? I thought it was to just hit it with that heat ray. I thought that heat yeah. ray was supposed to do all the job. Which it did pretty good. Like, they didn't even try to communicate with the aliens like – on any sort of level. Like there wasn't like, Oh, we come in peace. Let's discuss this. They just went to go shoot at it. Well, they didn't have a choice. The aliens have already been, they, yeah, they so. threw the first, you know, they, 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 they do first blood. Meanwhile, <laughs> the yeah. guy is destroying the ships. It's great. He blew up that whole ship really well. And then oh, the, before yeah. he gets, uh, you know, defeated and, uh, and so only one ship got blowed up. But yeah. it was great when they come back. They're like, "Oh, look at all these pieces of ship all around." <laughs> they also in the in the uh, the moon base. There's that part that that ball in the center pops up, and there's like a whole another thing there when they're really uh, uh, when they're fighting back. And there's also uh-huh. great. There's a lot of shots of like you uh, flying saucers going in and out of it. Uh huh. And it's yeah. also it can it can shoot directly from them, but also it was it was it was like it was it kind of gave you like it it was hard to kind of it looked it looked little when you saw it, but then you're seeing these flying saucers going in and out of it, and it's like oh I guess it's much bigger it's it's much more Death Star than we thought. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this that reminded me of Star Wars, especially once they leave and come back to Earth. Yeah, uh, but I do like when they left Earth and the do du- or they left the moon. And the dude stayed behind to... Oh, that was uh, great. Right. After he had done the thing. Oh, by the way, they, they figured out that they'd done the job on the, the moon base when they're like, um, it's burning on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> like you couldn't <laughs> like, really see it. looks like the inside's burning. So I think yeah. we did it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So when that guy finally, they, he, he, uh, he, after they destroy the moon base, they don't control his brain anymore. His heroic deed to make up for the fact that he blew up their their ship is that he's just going to fend off spaceships with his with his gun, like with his rifle. Yeah, his, but he looked yeah. like a badass doing it. His laser it was great, and he was so happy to do it too. Like it wasn't like a sad moment. He's like, "Go, go, be happy, have fun." You know, oh, by the enjoy way, enjoy your speak- life. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of. Hello, number two. There's also that great part when they both get in their uh, respective wienermobiles and they pull up alongside each other and they kind of wave at each other <laughs> yeah. through the window. It's like, isn't this crazy? We're on the moon. <laughs> the space battle is long and a lot of shots are definitely repeated. Right. But I yeah. loved it. <laughs> yeah. The the last resort of the aliens is to fire a space torpedo towards the Earth. Right. And we get shots of miniature New York and miniature San Francisco. Yeah, it was great. The Gold Gear Bridge gets destroyed and you can see uh, little bits of wood that, that, yes. <laughs> that the bridge is made out of wood. Yeah, which is fine. It's still awesome. Yeah. That they spent the time um, to build that thing and then destroy it. I like that there's a part where they 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 said that you have them on space radar, and uh-huh. so they knew uh-huh. that it was happening. Right, and then they deploy the the rockets. 
They they do, but they also yes, and they send right, and and so the space base ish like they have a mothership, um, which kind of looks like the space base, and they have the smaller flying saucers, and the mothership's weapon is insane and destroys cities like crazy. It basically is like it. It's like a vacuum. It like sucks oh, up yeah. people. It sucks up buildings. It sucks up buses, and it just kind of pulls them up, all destroying the trees, them. All the trees get pulled up. It's like they just decided to do the models, put the models upside down, so that when everything exploded, it would fall up. I, it's interesting because like they don't just they don't they don't suck them up whole. They destroy them. It's like it's really really well done. Yeah. Because they break apart, it's getting pulled. So, like, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't quite figure out if, uh, if if you can do that with, like, an industrial vacuum of some kind. But you would still need to anchor the building's base down in a way. Or, or if they scored them in a way so that they would break a certain way. Mm-hmm. It was It was really, really impressive destruction. And right. some blue screen people in the foreground get sucked <laughs> up. Yeah, it, the blue screen was bad, but it was still awesome to watch. Like dudes flying up in front of the like model destruction. So I didn't really care how bad the blue screen guys looked. They looked. It, yeah. it was just fun. Like it was, it was already it. exciting enough to to watch it. Um, that destruction, and then just to see people, like it's also sucking up people. Um. Yeah, all of that destruction was really good. And uh, yeah, so we had like rocket people fighting from space towards the Earth, and then we had uh, Earth people fighting in jets, or were they also rockets? They were like a X wings. They were like a weird like rocket space yeah. jet. Uh, they were like to doing dog fight. fights. Within the Earth's atmosphere against the flying saucers. Right. I, it was enjoyed, a pretty, I enjoyed all that. Even it, great battle. They're very Star Wars like with the pilots in their in their cockpits talking to each other and stuff. Um Yeah, it was it's enjoyable. It was really fun. Repetitive. <laughs> like you said, yeah. A lot of Yeah, the whole shots, sequence super repetitive. Yeah. Um Yeah, there's a Star Wars ripoff called Star Crash. And that has that same problem where they'll just keep showing the same shots over and over and over again. And it's like, I, I, I get it. I know. I oh, understand. you know, I was just remembering after the rockets or, or whatever, the, the earth jets rockets uh-huh. did their job. It w- they had to, they, they had, they were running out of fuel. They had to refuel. And that's when the earth had like, those big giant um, satellite gun things. <laughs> yeah. They are like shoot. the Mazers, but they were satellite dishes. Yeah. But like big ones. There's also like a mini satellite dish sort of in the buggies that would spin around. The like turret. Right. And like shoot the dudes. Yeah. But yeah, I like the defense, the defense force that they were able to set up for this attack. Like the like with the satellite dishes and the and the sort of X-wing rockets, like they were ready, <laughs> they're ready for this shit to go down. It was, it was pretty cool. It made me sort of wish that the Mysterians had something similar because I think in the Mysterians it was just the dome in the in the field and they were shooting it with tanks. So if this is a sequel to Mysterians, they like have spent the last X amount of years. Uh, building up the defense for the next time they came around. It was oh, neat. Oh, and so, oh, so this is like their uh, Independence Day resurgence. Sure. I didn't see that, but I'm assuming. I didn't hear yeah. it. I'm assuming they used alien technology to soup up the jets and stuff, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, it could be like that. Like they used the alien technology to create this heat gun that was able to go through the world's strongest metal and they were able to create rockets in these giant satellite dishes based off of the technology that they scra- they got from the scraps. But What else is great is with um, 60s uh, advanced technology is 
that there's like uh, stuff like dot matrix printers. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. That are like that's how like they get printouts and that's how they get reports as to what's going on. Yeah, it's like their news ticker. Oh, and then at the very end, the the kid and his wife show up again. Yeah, after they win, and and they he's like, hands. oh, <laughs> yeah, and he's like, his kid's like, how many did we uh, beat or whatever, and the dad's like. Uh, you can read all about it in the papers, and he kisses his wife and walks out. <laughs> oh, there's a weird thing at the end, though. Um, there's a part where after they're like, um, hey, we're going to go talk to the rocket pilots now. And it's kind of like uh, it's over, the uh, music, but then it cuts to an uh like another one of these rocket jets just flying in outer space before it says the end right and i was like Who, who's that guy <laughs> is that like a cliffhanger i don't know <laughs> like like they're still oh, out just so you know the bad guys oh, there was one of those yeah right like they're still out there ready to fight don't worry you're safe yeah. as long as they're on the job yeah and who knows they might show up yeah it was entertaining it was a it just action packed, tons of model work. Um, I enjoyed it. I might have liked the Mysterians a little bit more because we got to see the Mysterians. Um, I definitely revisit both of them, like especially if there's something that comes out where they have like a good version. <laughs> Someone goes and finds it and remasters it and makes it good, because that's really what I want to see. Yeah, both yeah, both these are movies that I was like, oh yeah, I want to see these like, uh, uh, in better quality. Yeah, widescreen, and yeah, because you could tell it's like that Toho scope. Because when it cuts to like the credits and stuff, it's like that Toho scope widescreen, and you don't really in the whole movie you can tell when the when you're missing stuff in shots, like when you see a rocket take off and then the the like camera sort of digitally pans over to another rocket taking off it's yeah it's it needs to be something needs to happen with those but um for the most part i enjoyed it there's not much to it i think dr ahmed is the only character name i picked up uh i don't know any of the other character names they were just kind of people just people versus aliens so yeah it was fine it was fine. Um, not really a kaiju movie. <laughs> I, no. Which I, which watching, I was like, oh yeah, we usually have at least one monster. At least Mysterians had like Mogera in it. It was a giant robot, but this didn't have anything. Um, in fact, the only like creature we see are like tiny creatures. So, but it was fine. Uh, it's it. I think I, I like I. I I dug it. I mean, just yeah. for all the sci-fi aesthetic stuff. Right, right. It was like a, I, it was like an onslaught of space models and and in design. Yeah, yeah, and moonscapes. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was, I was, I liked it. It was good. And uh, man, if as soon as as soon as a better version pops up, though, I'm getting that. Um. That's all I have for battle in outer space. <laughs> I just keep thinking of how that that weird relationship between I don't know he's like the base guy and the girl. Yeah. And oh, oh yeah, oh uh, when they're staring up, they're staring up at the moon, uh-huh. and she's got this whole bit where she's like, um, ah, uh, just beautiful like the. Imagine there's a prince up there who's going to come down and carry me away forever. <laughs> and then, oh, there's a cock block in it, in a way. When the guy shows up, or or I don't know, or opposite, the guy who shows up who's going to go, like, because he's like, hey, because like, they're going to go on the ship. He's like, hey, I'm going to go and kiss some girls goodbye. Let's go. Come on. Let's go have a night at the town. And he's like, hey, I'm doing all right right here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that's a cock block. For who? Does that guy well, still go out on the town? 
Well, I don't know, because he's, he's, he's very awkward with that girl anyway, so who yeah. knows if... Where he'd be better off. At least they hugged at the end. <laughs> the Americans can kiss, but they'll just hug. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about next episode. I believe it's from 1985. Oh, cool. I think. Um, we are watching Polgasari. Oh, right. Polgasari, which I think is a gigantic bull creature. Oh, mm, boy. So that should be good or this is, bad. Yeah. <laughs> this is the is like North Korean? Something. All we'll right. See. All right. We'll be there. We'll have a link for you for that on kaijubot.com. Don't know what to expect. Mm -mm, No idea what to expect. We'll see. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Um, Hopefully, yeah. (laughs) I don't know if it's going to be like... No idea what what it's going to be. Yeah. Huge question marks. That's That's like the rest of our... The remainder of our episodes are either like, okay, we got this one. Like, okay, yeah, this we're is, pretty sure we can see this one out. Or this yeah. is like, oh, man, it's a big yeah. crap shoot. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, thanks for the suggestions. Those that suggested, so we got some things to kind of move around. We've we've uh, removed Raiga from the list. Yes, Raiga has been replaced. Do you want to say, oh, we can say with what? Yeah, it's uh, fine. They'll, they'll, still, they'll show up. Uh, 20,000 miles to Earth. Yeah, it might not. I haven't changed it on the site yet. Oh, it's probably changed by now. <laughs> I keep forgetting about how these work and when these get Magic. released. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh, I don't feel like doing that tonight. Oh, I don't mm-hmm. have to. I've got like, mm-hmm. you know, like a month or something. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, watch Polgasari. That'll be on kaijupod.com. Uh, that also has links to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, and. Yeah, that's it. Until next time, I'm going to go hop in this Wienermobile. I'm just going to try to keep remembering that gravity is different. Oh, good luck. It's Mm -hmm. really hard. Very scary. (laughs) All right. All right.